All right, welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're going to evaluate another expression. Okay? So, let's first read the expression and see what we're working with. So, we got negative quantity. Now, when we have terms inside parentheses, that's called a quantity. Quantity. Q-U-A-N-T-I-T-Y. That's called a quantity. All right? So, this is the negative quantity of two times, this dot means multiplication, right? times negative two, all raised to the third power, or you could say cubed. Cubed and raised to the third power mean the same thing, all right? Plus the quantity, negative three minus three, all squared, all right? Now, you might be wondering, like, how do I know if it's a negative or how do I know if it's minus? What should I say? Well, this is, a, this is the first term in a sequence or in an expression, so it's not being subtracted from anything, so that's why you would just call it a negative three. But this three is being actually subtracted from this number. So since that's an action, right? Think of the words like plus and minus as action words or action verbs. Think of positive and negative as just adjectives. So you got, if you understand a little bit about like English language grammar, then you can also apply that to mathematics, right? So this right here is a minus sign, not a negative sign. And in this, in this context, it's not a negative sign, it's a minus sign. So you got a negative three, because that's just a negative. That's just, um, this symbol is describing this number three, right? But this three is actually being subtracted from this number. So that's an action, right? So we got description, negative, action, subtraction. Description, it's a negative, action, subtraction. So it's two different things going on. So those are the little, the little details of mathematics that we should learn, right? Because if you don't know it, then you might get confused one day when you hear somebody reading the problem out loud or hear your professor or whoever, you know, talking about a problem. All right. And it's all raised to the second power or squared. Squared or raised to the second power is the same thing. Just like cubed or raised to the third power is the same thing. All right. Now, we're going to use the order of operations. Now, sometimes when we do problems like this, let me give you another little detail. We do problems like this. You might want to put an equal sign right here and go to the right. But I'm about to run out of space. So I'm not about to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work vertically. I'm going to work vertically. And vertical is cool, too, because you'll see that often in textbooks where the problem is worked out vertically. And that way you can see step by step. OK, this is the original problem. Then step one looks like this. Then step two looks like this. Then step three looks like this. Then step four and so on and so forth. So you can see the progression because it's all about progression. Right. You can see the progression from the beginning of the problem to the end of the problem. All right. And that way if, and that's cool, because if you make a mistake, you can go back and check and find out where your mistake was at. You could be like, oh, right there. See, look at that. I left out a negative sign right there. You could do that if you got your work all uh, worked out vertically, nice and neat. So let's do this. Let's work out everything inside the parentheses. Because in the order of operations, we work out everything that's inside parentheses, brackets, or braces. We do that all first. And if there are multiple parentheses, brackets, or braces, we work the innermost brackets or braces or parentheses first and then we expand out so in this case i gotta this negative two is inside parentheses but it's nothing happening to the negative two it's just a negative two the only reason it's in the parentheses probably is to separate it from this multiplication sign which is not a big deal but so in the parentheses we got two times negative two all right so we're going to do the mental math two times negative two is not positive four it's negative four because a positive times a negative will always equal a negative so two times negative two is negative four. So then this is about to, about to look like this. It's gonna be a negative, negative four to the third power. All right, then I put my plus sign. I'm gonna do something with this too. I got negative three minus three. If you have negative three, that's like owing somebody $3. Minus three is like borrowing three more dollars from that person. Or you can be borrowing from somebody else. And then you just trying to take an account of how much money do you owe altogether. So if you already owe somebody $3 and then you borrow another $3, that's subtracting three, right? Now altogether you owe them $6 or you owe $6 altogether. So owing is negative. We see owing as a bad thing, right? Tip, generally speaking. So that's negative six. So this in the parentheses becomes negative six. All right? So now the problem is getting simpler. So now we see this turned into this and this turned into this. So now you can see your work step by step. Now, over here, we got options. We can either multiply by this negative one, because this negative sign is really a negative one for real. It's really a negative one. 
right? Whenever you see a negative sign just in front of a number or in front of parentheses, that's really an abbreviation of saying negative one times whatever this is. Just remember that, write that down, make a note of that. A negative, a random negative sign in front of a number or in front of a variable or in front of a term really means negative one times whatever it's next to. So negative one times whatever's to the right of it. So this is saying negative one times negative four. But this exponent is still here. So you got to ask yourself a question. You got to say, you got to decide, should you use the exponent first or should you multiply by negative one first? These are the questions that you got to ask yourself whenever you're evaluating or simplifying and you're trying to apply the order of operations correctly. It's a series of questions. You got to ask, you got to have an internal dialogue and ask yourself these questions. What should I do next? What should I do next? What should I do next? You got to keep asking yourself that. And it's based on the rules. So the rules tell us that we use the exponent next. We don't do, we don't multiply by negative one next. As bad as you might want to. And even me, like I've been doing this for years and sometimes I'll be tempted to go against the order of operations, but I got to remain disciplined. You got to remain disciplined and follow the rules and good things will happen. So we do negative four to the third power. It's not negative 12 because we're not doing negative four times three. We ain't doing that. We ain't about to do that. We're doing negative four times negative four, which is positive 16. And then positive 16 times negative four, which is negative 64. So now I got negative of negative 64, right? Then I got my plus sign. And then over here, all I got is a exponent. I mean, it's a plus sign, but, you know, we got to use that. We can either, okay, think about it like this. You can either add the negative six or you can use the exponent with the negative six. Again, internal dialogue. You got to ask yourself the question, what do I do next? Follow the order of operations. The order of operations says that we always use exponents, right? Exponents become come before addition. Exponents before addition. So get yourself, if you don't have the order of operations memorized, go online, pull it up, write down the list of or, the order of the operations, write them down in your notebook so you have them for yourself at all times until you memorize them. You could use PEMDAS as a memory device, but you got to be careful with PEMDAS because in PEMDAS, the M is before the D and that confuses people because it makes them think that they always got to multiply before they divide and you don't. It depends on what comes first when you move it left to right. Right. So sometimes it's D before M. So it could be ped mas. It depends on the situation. Another thing you got to look out for is what parentheses. Sometimes parentheses represent multiplication, because if a number is inside parentheses. And there's another number next to it outside of the parentheses, that just means that you need to multiply that. But because people don't understand what those parentheses mean in that situation, they think that you got to do that operation first. That's not the case. When PEMDAS talks about P, the P for parentheses in PEMDAS, they're talking about grouping symbols. Grouping symbols like these parentheses. So meaning you do the work inside of these parentheses and you do the work inside of these parentheses. That's what they talk about. All right, that's what they're talking about. Now, negative six to the second power is just negative six times negative six, which is positive 36. So I'm gonna put my plus, plus sign is already there. So now I got 36. Now over here, I got a negative sign and I got another negative, so that's a double negative. So the question I got to ask myself, and that's why it's so important to understand that this negative sign out here really means negative one times this number. Because if you don't understand that, you might try to do negative 64 plus 36 first, and that would be wrong because you're not following the order of operations. So in this situation, when you get to this step, you got two choices. You can either multiply by this negative one, this invisible one right here, it's an invisible one right there. You can either multiply by that first or you could just add 36. Because we understand the order of operations, we know we got to multiply first. We got to multiply. So negative one times negative 64 is positive 64. Or you can think of this as a double negative and say, oh, well, what do I do with double negatives? You turn them into a positive. So this becomes positive 64. Bring down your plus 36 and then you just add them together. You got one step left, 64 plus 36. Do that mentally in your head. There's a lot of ways to add numbers up. Sometimes I like to add by place value. So I might do 60 plus 30, which is 90. And I do 4 plus 6, which is 10. 90 plus 10 is 100. And that's our final answer. Boom. Oh, yeah, always draw a box around your final answers. Yeah, do that. So you can, like, distinguish all your work from your final answer. All right? So final answer is 100. Okay? But remember... Learn the order of operations, learn the rules,
Learn the order that they go in. Don't think that you always multiply before divide because that's wrong. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Um, understand what they mean by parentheses. If they're talking about a grouping symbol, like these are a grouping symbol. These are a grouping symbol. Um, sometimes you'll see a number like this dot. They need to put this dot here. They could have just wrote the two next to the parentheses around the negative two. That would have also symbolized or symbolized multiplication. So don't confuse that situation where parentheses just mean multiplication with parentheses as a grouping symbol. So those are the two main things you got to look out for when you're dealing with order of operations. I've seen it over the years. I've been teaching to a high school for like 17 years. I've seen it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like over and over again, these same mistakes over and over again. I mean, when I was a student, I made some of these mistakes. So I know from experience firsthand. I don't want you to make these mistakes. All right. But go get some practice. Evaluate some expressions. Ask your teacher, ask your professor, ask whoever. Go online, get some practice problems and get some practice so you can master this. All right. You got to practice. OK, it's OK if you get some problems wrong up at first. Just make sure that you Keep practicing until you master it. But follow, the, learn the rules and follow the rules. All right? Just keep following the rules over and over again. It's going to come to you. I promise you. All right? I'll see you on the next video. Peace.